go ahead and stand and praise the Lord this morning. Amen. Step out of the shadows. Step out of the grave. Break into the wild. And don't Where the spirit 
watching live stream as well thank you all for tuning in uh, with us and just appreciate everyone that's here this morning got a couple of announcements uh, before we go into worship uh, junior high class uh, Diet is actually already uh, uh, junior disciples are already holding class so if you'd like to go in there you're welcome to go now they have praise and worship going on so you're welcome to go then uh, secondly uh, this Friday everybody say this Friday which is going to be September the 18th at 7 p.m. Ladies, y'all are having a ladies meeting. Come on now. Hallelujah. So uh, y'all come out. You're going to kick off the uh, fall season, right? Is that what you're doing? Won't you tell them a little bit of that? Kicking off the fall season. Ah, there you go. <laughs> and uh, so come it's on It's going to be good to be together again. That's right. That's right. And if you're able to let Marlene know, uh, if you're able to come, we can get a head count. That way we can go from there. If not, come on anyway. Amen. The last thing I'd like to do is really open up with a word of prayer and pray for this storm that's uh, brewing in uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, you know, as uh, we see the storm seasons here, we just pray that that, that, that thing just dissipates. The shear just knocks it out. I know, I know I'm looking at the forecast. Um, you know, we are looking at putting our steeple up first thing in the morning. We have a 100-foot boom that's coming in to lift it and put it on. And so that is a little bit of a selfish prayer, if that's okay. You know, we need some good weather, no wind. But also, you know, I know uh, Lake Charles has been devastated, and we don't want any of that to happen to anyone else. So let's pray together, amen, and uh, believe God that that thing will just dissipate. Let's open up with that word of prayer. Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name, and we thank you for this morning. We thank you, Lord God, for your presence, Lord, to fill this place. We know that you, we have the confidence to know that you're right here in our hearts. And that, Lord God, as we assemble together, Father God, that you would just have your way and minister and move through your Holy Spirit. We lift up, Lord God, uh, um, all that have been affected by the hurricanes in the past. We pray, Lord, that provision would be there. We pray for this hurricane that's happening or that about to, uh, about to be turned into a hurricane. We pray that you would just send a wind shear and knock that thing down, Father God, that it would dissipate and cause no harm whatsoever so lord we thank you for hearing our prayer lord god we invite you once again to have your way during this time of worship in jesus name amen amen let's begin to worship him church amen
spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me for I took a prayer you breathed your life in me you have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves a ninety-nine. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it.
won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the unending love that you have for us. Lord, as we read in your word, we can see it in your word. And Lord, I thank you that your spirit is here to confirm your word in our heart and in our minds. And Lord, I thank you that, that you're, you make yourself available to each and every one of us. Congregation, as I pray this, if you're if you're still uh, at a place to where you you're wrestling with, if you're wrestling with that concept of how could God love me unconditionally like that, as we read His Word and the Holy Spirit of God confirms that Word in your spirit, the enemy would try to come in and he would try to convince you otherwise. There's a scripture in Romans chapter 8, I mean, I'm sorry, in, in Romans chapter 5, it says that Christ, that God commended his love toward us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So I want us to all understand and know that he knew where we were before, and yet he still chose us. In John 15, 16, Jesus tells us, we did not choose him, but he chose us. He's chose us for a purpose and a plan. He's chose us, if you continue to read in John 15, to produce and bear much fruit. It shows us this is how God receives his glory. He receives glory in that way, I should say. And so, church, I want you to know that God does use uh, 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 things uh, uh, in our lives that we have gone through, the things that we look at and failures 
the sin that we've all done. And he takes those things, and yes, he casts them as far as the east is from the west as we ask for forgiveness and, and understand that Jesus has taken and paid the price for us. But he will use those uh, uh, situations because he's brought you through those things. And he wants you to know that he desires for you to be equipped that you may help others uh, that may be struggling in the same way. So, Father God, we thank you that there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to your spirit. And that, Lord God, we come to you humbly before you. We know you resist the proud, but you give more grace to the humble. And that we stand before you as a, a people realizing and knowing that we're broken in times and broken vessels in your hands. But we also know that it's the vessel that's not important, but what is inside the vessel. And you have shown us that we are the temple of your Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, I thank you that your spirit resides in us. So, Lord, have your way. Do your work through your Holy Spirit. And, Lord, in doing so, we give you all the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give you my hand clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah.
don't know where to go from here, Lord, so have your way. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you for your precious, precious spirit in this place. We thank you for preparing our hearts and minds for your word concerning praise and prayer. So, Lord, I thank you that your anointing is here to minister. And uh, if those are here that have a, a spirit of heaviness, they put on the garment of praise. Lord God, uh, we thank you for freedom, for victory, for joy and peace and rest. Be sure to give you the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You can be seated. That was good. Amen. Thank you. You know, just uh, being sensitive to the Holy Spirit of God and uh, just allowing Him to have His way. I know the teenagers you guys are going to meet uh, here in the back, and um, we'll see uh, We'll see what time we finish. You know, you come to the second service, so guess what? We don't necessarily have a time frame, right, Dustin? <laughs> but uh, as we do in the first, but there's just a sweet presence of God in this place. I pray that you, you sense that and feel that and receive his presence. Amen. He is definitely here, and, and, uh, and you know, uh, I believe he's... Um, has received the praise and worship, uh, just as the incense would go up in the Old Testament in the tabernacle. I believe he's received that, and it's a sweet smell to him. I believe that. So thank you so much for being obedient, praise and worship team, and, and congregation, thank you for being obedient. Amen. I've got a message for you this morning uh, in the last, I guess, in the last uh, couple of weeks. I've really been building on the uh, on the principle of being ready or being dressed for battle and understanding that we are in conflict. There's a conflict that's going on out there in, in our world, in society today, in the kingdom of darkness is out there. If you've been here, you understand that, what I'm speaking of. But also, Jesus ushered in the kingdom, amen, of, uh, of light and uh and in Colossians, it talks about we've been translated out of darkness and brought into the kingdom of the love of his son. And so, you know, you, we are no longer, uh, if you can say it this way, as the Bible says, we're pilgrims passing through. We're no longer of this world in that sense. Our citizenship's in heaven. And uh, so we, uh, we, we see things and we perceive things, I pray, from that perspective. And so, yes, there's chaos and confusion that's out there. There's many things that are happening. I know in our society and, and many uh, voices that are out there that are trying to persuade uh, people in certain directions, let's just stick with the Word of God. If we stick with the Word of God, it's going to work out. It's going to be good. It's going to be fine, and we're going to go forward. So I've been building on this, um, on this message about being dressed for the battle. Uh, and so if you would turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6, and I'll just, I, I'm going to just take a few minutes, just about five minutes to really just kind of uh, reiterate one point, um, really the first point of my message last week. But the title of last week's message, or the last two weeks' messages was Dress for Battle. And, uh, and so uh, as I go through this, understand I, I, we are in a spiritual warfare. It's not natural. It's in not, we don't fight in the natural let me just get to the word in verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Verse 11, put on. Everybody say put on. Because I want you to see this. Put on the whole armor of God. It's not your God, it's not your armor, but it's God's armor. So you put on the whole armor of God. As you think about that whole armor, it's everything that you need, God equips you with to be successful. So put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand or to stand, you may be able to stand against the wiles or strategies of the devil. And uh, in verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up. Everybody say take up. Now in verse 11, I had you say, put on the whole armor of God. Verse 13 says, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, stand therefore. As I think about the, those two verses, 
verse 11 and verse 13, one of them says put on. And what we're doing is we're, that word, those words put on is to sink into the garment, to sink into the whole armor of God. It's not yours, but it's God's armor that he's equipping us with. So we put on, like, like I put this jacket on this morning, we slip it on, we, we sink into the garment, but verse 13 doesn't say put on, it says take up. And if you look at those words take up, it means to put in action. So we put it on, we, 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 we put it on, and then we take our action. To sum up last week's message, we don't fight for victory, but we fight from a place of his victory. My question to you, do we dare to believe that we can make a difference? Do we dare to believe it? I pray that I pray that you believe with all your heart that you can make a difference in your family. You can make a difference on your job. You can make a difference in, in this church. You can make a difference in your community. You can make a difference in your state and your nation. We can make a difference in this world. Come on, Jesus. He's looking for his church to rise. Last week, I, the first point was have confidence that he's with you. Right? In the, and I ended with, do you need proof? Well, corporately, as we think about meeting together corporately, the Apostle Paul had written a letter to the church at Corinth. And it was really in response to some questions that that church had uh, in that city. And if you're in pastoral ministry, if you do any counseling, I encourage you to take the book of 1 Corinthians and read it from cover to cover, that letter, because you'll find so many answers. I tell you, especially in premarital counseling and postmarital counseling, I've, I've used 1 Corinthians so much. And in there, there's a section that evidently the church at Corinth was asking Paul some questions in this manner, I believe. Hey, Paul, when we get together and we get together as a church, as a group, and we're, we're worshiping God, there's some things that are happening. Someone will stand up and say, thus saith the Lord, and give a word uh, uh, of knowledge. And, and then another one will give, give a word of, of wisdom. And they may not quote, quote it that or may not say it that way. You know what else? Another one will discern there's a, a, a spirit. One will lay hands on the sick, and there's a gift of healing that takes place or a working of a miracle. What do we call those in 1 Corinthians chapter 12? The gifts of the spirit. So Paul, what he's doing is re, he's answering their question, and I love this verse in 1 Corinthians 12, 7. He says, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is given for the profit of everyone. And Paul is, is explaining what's happening in a church service. From chapters 11, 12, 13, and 14, Paul is addressing a church service, and he's showing that the Holy Spirit wants to manifest himself. Manifest, you know, you think about manifesting, if, if I had a door there, which I don't, but if I had a door there instead of that OSB, I could walk in that classroom, shut the door, you wouldn't see me. But if I walked out of that door, I would manifest in a sense to you, right? I'd show up. God's saying the Holy Spirit is showing up. Have confidence. My point number one last week was have confidence that God is with us. Corporately, yes, but more importantly, independently, our everyday life that he's with us. Jude says it in verse 20. He says this. He tells us this is the half-brother of Jesus, I believe. Jude encourages us to pray. He says, build up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Now, I've taught classes on the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. That's biblical. That's scriptural. When you ask Jesus into your heart, the Spirit of God comes to live in your heart. But Jesus told him in Acts chapter 1, he says, wait here till you receive the promise uh, 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 from my Father, and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the rest of the world. And in Acts chapter 2, they were waiting, and they received the promise. And they, start, they came out of that upper room speaking in an unknown language. They were speaking uh, 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 where others and other nationalities could hear them. You know, as we think about uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, we think about that. And the way I teach it, if that's okay, the way I teach it is, you know, you're not trying to prove to anyone that you have the Holy Spirit living in you. 
You're not trying to prove to a pastor or someone praying for you that you have his spirit living in you. You're definitely not trying to convince God or prove to God that you have his spirit in you. He already knows. So what's the evidence for? I preach it this way. The evidence is for you to know. The Holy Spirit is in me. My goodness, as I start to pray and intercede and and seek God, and and there's things that start bubbling up within my own DNA and my spirit and my in my spiritual life, all of a sudden, it's like rivers of living water that, that I start to express praise and worship unto God, and I may break out and say some, some words that, that I don't even realize what they are. I believe that's praying in the Holy Spirit. And then I realize, oh, the, yes, I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. So point number one last week, being dressed for battle in his armor, is really having confidence that God's with you, always. This morning, I can't take credit for the uh, title. My title this morning, when we're talking about dress for battle, my title this morning is SWAT. Everybody say SWAT. I can't take credit for it. There's a, there's a, a young lady that texted me this past week, Miss Gloria Grimion. She told me. She just sent me a text, and there it was. And, and I tell you, uh, uh, as... Uh, I thought about the SWAT team. How many of y'all know the SWAT team? That is special weapons and tactics. And, you know, we have, if there's a situation in our, in our community, uh, in, in desperate situation times, they'll send the SWAT team in, right? Because they have special weapons and tactics to take care of it. Well, you know what we are in taking off of that? We have spiritual weapons and tactics. You see, we're dressed for battle. And... and and in that battle, ours, instead of being special, they're special, all right. They're spiritual weapons and tactics. And we've been discussing the spiritual weapons. The last couple of weeks, we've been looking at the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, and prayer. Amen. We're looking at those spiritual weapons. This morning, I want to talk to you about tactics. Everybody say tactics. If I think about that, I looked up the definition. It's Tactic means actions carefully planned to achieve a specific end. Church, I want to talk to you about tactics of, you ready? Praise and prayer. Praise and prayer. We're dressed for battle. We got the armor of God. And in the SWAT team of God, we have tactics. I believe, number one, the Lord reveals himself as we praise him. That's a tactic. Man, I think about, and, and I shared a little bit of this last Sunday about the different words, Hebrew words on praise. Y'all remember Shabbat, the shout? Y'all remember uh, uh, the one of Baru was to bow? And I used that out of Matthew 13, how the wheat and tares, if y'all remember that, I was standing on the chair and how the wheat bowed down with the fruit that it had, but the tares were full of pride. Y'all can read that Matthew 13. The one I want to talk about this morning is a Hebrew word called yada, labeled yada. Everybody say yada. Y'all got to help me with this message. Yada means lifting up your hands. Yada means to throw up your hands like this. And it shows a sign of worship. It shows a sign of praise. It shows a sign of, can I say, surrender. In Psalm 107, verse 8, and also verse 21, the psalmist writes, oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness. That word thanks, as you look at the Hebrew word, oh, that men would give yada to the Lord for his goodness. Oh, that men would throw up their hands in surrender and worship and praise for his goodness. Is that what happened this morning? Is that what was taking place as we were singing, we will exalt thee? I pray it was. Paul said to his spiritual son Timothy in 1 Timothy 2, 8, he said, he would desire that men would lift up hands without wrath and without doubting. I want to talk to you this morning about the SWAT, the, the spiritual weapons and tactics. And the two tactics, which are many, there are probably many tactics, but the two I want to talk about is praise and prayer. I want to talk to you about praise and prayer. And as I, I think about this message I believe the Lord reveals himself through praise. You see, because what praise does, I believe it, 
It gets us in proper perspective. It gets us understanding the chain of command. Who is king and who is sitting on the throne? It's God. God, I heard a preacher say years ago, God don't need no matches. He's fire all by himself. He's everything. He's God. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And as we throw up our hands in yada, as we do this in praise and in worship and surrender, we're saying you are king. And we understand the proper line of the chain of command. We express our submission and we express our dependence. We express our faith in God when we put on praise. He tells us in Isaiah, I looked it up right before we, I came up here in Isaiah, I think it's 61, that we can, we can put on the garment of praise with a spirit of heaviness. See, praise, praise does something. It gives a, it, praise when, how many of y'all feel, how many of y'all understand what I'm saying about uh, uh, praise? When you might be going, you may be watching whatever news channel you watch and just out there is chaos and confusion and you just finally say enough's enough and you turn that television on, on onto some praise channel or you turn your radio on and you say, you know what, I'm going to just start praising God. And, and there's an atmospheric change, uh, uh, just like this, this weather, we have an atmospheric change in the weather. When you put on praise, the atmosphere, there's got to be a change in the atmosphere. It's got to be something that changes because all of a sudden you're showing proper chain of command. You're showing as you lift up those hands in that yada and you're surrendering and you're praising and you're worshiping the Lord and you're saying, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And you find yourself, you find yourself at a place as we express that, you know, strength. It brings strength to us. Not only that, but I give you a little heads up. The devil hates praise. He hates worship. Psalm chapter 8, verse 2 in the NIV says, Praise steals the avenger. It stops him in his tracks. You want to get rid of the devil? You want to get rid of that that's been been tormenting or, or, or just over and over, just put your praise on. Come on, you, you know what I'm talking about? You ever been in a spiritual warfare? It just seems like, my goodness, this one's coming against me. That's coming against me. Flip on the praise. Put your hands up. Do the yada, amen? And as you praise him, the Bible tells us in Psalm chapter 68, 1, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. There's a... There's a uh, acrostics that, that you may have heard. It's not original. I saw it somewhere. Pat, P-A-T-T, praise all the time. That's just praise all the time. There will be distractions. There will be those that, that you may get caught up in voluntarily finding yourself getting caught away with, with some things. Right now we're in the building program, and if I'm not careful, I can get distracted. I can have my mind on this storm that may be in the, that's in the Gulf now, and we're supposed to uh, put a, a steeple on this roof uh, first thing in the morning, and if I'm not careful, I can have my thoughts on that. You know what I need to do? I need to praise Him. I need to praise God, amen? Trust in Him. I need to praise Him all the time. Praise is powerful. You see, my message to you this morning about SWAT, the spiritual weapons, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of peace, the shield of faith, the, the, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, our tactics, at least two of them, praise. Everybody say praise. Prayer. Everybody say prayer. Let's praise all the time. Turn with me to uh, Exodus chapter 17. I want to start in verse 8. And, and it's an Old Testament story, an account of God bringing his people out of Egyptian bondage. And uh, they have come up against resistance. They are in warfare in the natural. And uh, the nation, the, uh, the people of Amalek have come against God's people. Moses, God is using Moses uh, uh, to lead his people, brought them out of bondage, and they come against a spiritual, uh, they come against a natural attack. And, and I want you to see that what happens, how Moses handles this natural attack in the spiritual realm. And I believe that can apply to our lives as well today. And I'll start reading in Exodus 17, starting in verse 8. Now Amalek came and fought with Israel in Ephraim. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose us some men and go out, fight with Amalek. 
Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Verse 11, and so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Verse 12, but Moses' hands became heavy, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. His hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Verse 13, so Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Why do I bring this up? I'm seeing something that takes place. Do we dare to believe that we can make a difference? There is an attack that's taking place, a spiritual attack. We know the enemy comes to steal. He comes to kill. He comes to destroy. God has come. Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. I know that we're dressed for battle. I've been preaching and teaching about being dressed for battle. The warfare that's out there is not natural, but it's in the spiritual realm. And I pray that you've taken up God's armor. I pray that you've taken, not only put it on, but you've taken it up, God's armor, and that you're going, and you're, you're going to the battle. You know, as we think about it, uh, uh, we think about the scriptures about uh, uh, um, the enemy that's out there and, and, and how uh, what happens is there is a battle, uh, but Jesus said this about his church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. I believe we need to be offensive. I believe we have a world that's out there that's looking for someone to lead them and guide them. And you know what? God has given us the answer. I believe he's looking for his church, not just New Life Worship Center, but churches all across this world to rise up and say what God has said. Rise up and be that city on a hill. Rise up so that people can see and see hope and say this is the direction. This is the right way to go. I believe God is looking for us, and especially in this end time. And so we have been, we have been uh, given the whole armor of God. I pray that you put it on. I pray, I pray that you've taken it up. And I pray that the tactics, because we have the spiritual weapons in our tactics of praise and prayer, I believe that the Lord reveals himself in praise as a tactic also. I believe the Lord, in point, point number two, I believe the Lord releases his power as we pray. He reveals his, himself in, in praise, but he releases his power as we pray. There was a real fight going on. Right here in, in Exodus 17, uh, uh, there's a real fight going on in, 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 in the situations we're going in. It may be in a, an attack on your body. It may be in our, our community or whatever the case. And look at what Moses did. Look at what he did. He, he, and and he, he, commissions, he commissions Joshua. And then he says in verse 9, middle way through, he says, I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. You know what I see Moses doing? He said, I'm going, to make the, I'm going to make the ascent. I'm going to climb on top of that hill. You know, uh, there, there's some, there's some um, as we think about prayer, we think about waking up in the morning and, and getting ready for the day. And, I mean, you know, it's good to, to hear from headquarters before your day starts. In other words, you know, pray. But I tell you, the enemy will resist you. The enemy, when you when you go to to, to, to really seek God and pray, I tell you, there's going to be a battle for your attention. You may be thinking about a steeple on top of a roof, and so you may not take that opportunity to really seek direction from the Lord. Is that making sense? But as we praise him, I believe he, he reveals himself. As we pray to him, I believe what he does is he releases his power through prayer. Moses said, you know what? I'm going to go up on the hill. I'm going to go make a stand. I will stand on top of this hill. When you're up there, you see things from a different perspective, don't you? I, I was blessed to be able to uh, uh, have some men help me to get on top of this uh, scaffold up here. And I uh, did it before my wife got here. Because uh, that's 35 feet in the air. That's not too high. But, you know, it's kind of tricky getting up there. The first time I did it, I, I made sure nobody was around. And, and they had the scaffolding. I said, I'm going to see if I can get up there. I used to work construction. And uh, got about halfway up, nobody's around. I thought, it's kind of scary. I can come on back down. The next day, I had some men. They were going up there. I said, you know what? I got to do this. Once I got up there and got up on that platform, 
Man, you could see from you could see almost the false river. What a beautiful sight. Moses, here he is on top of the hill, seeing a different perspective. Prayer will bring you into a different perspective. You see, we're talking about spiritual weapons and tactics. Praise, we got to put our praise on. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta lift up our hands and and as the scripture says that yada, we gotta lift up and worship God because He reveals Himself in praise. We gotta find ourselves in prayer. We gotta get it. We gotta see from God's perspective. Let's climb on, climb on up on that mountain like like Moses did. And you know what Moses did? He had the rod of God in his hand. You and I, we've got the rod of God in our hand if we've got the Word of God. We need to take this Word. The Bible tells us in in uh, in first in first john chapter 5 verse 14 and 15 now this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he hears us and if we know that he hears us we have the petitions that we desire of him i, I tell you in prayer god re, re, releases his power through prayer praying god's word get up on that hill get up on that mountain Pray God's word. See it from his perspective. Take the word of God and say, God, I trust you. Lord, I am trusting you, and I'm taking this word, the word of God in my hand. And the Bible tells us as he did this, as he had his hands up in praise, had the word of God, and in, 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 in that place of prayer, Joshua was winning. But how many of you know his hands started to go down? You see, if we're losing ground to the enemy, we might ought to check our prayer life. We might ought to check our praise life. As I think about prayer and, and praise, these tactics, it gives us direction. It gives us a, a power in the spirit of God. I read this, and, and I'll, I'll just quote what I read. An old saying is, a painted fire is no fire. A dead man is no man. A cold prayer is no prayer. Painted fire, there's no heat. A dead man, there's no life. A cold prayer, there's no presence. Arrows without heads, swords without edges, and birds without wings. We need, to, we need to put our praise on. We need to put the garment of praise on. God reveals himself through praise. God releases his power, I believe, through prayer. And I think about Moses. What did he say? He said when his hands started to go down. They started to lose the battle. And who you had Aaron on one side, you had her on the other, right? You know what that shows me? We can't do this thing on our own. It shows me that no matter how how much of God's presence and anointing that you have on your life, God has built us to work together. Moses needed Aaron. Moses needed her as much as Moses needed Joshua in the battle. He needed Aaron and her on each side. You see, if we're going to win the battles, we need each other. God's made it that way. He's designed his church. He wants us to fellowship and come together. We need each other. Moses needed Aaron. He needed her just as much as he needed Joshua with the sword in his hand. The second thing I see in this story, they had Moses sit on a stone. That speaks to me of Moses being in a place of stability of support, and most of all, a place of rest. The battle is raging, but Moses was at rest. He had his men on each side of him, holding his hands up, and the Bible tells us in verse 13, it tells us that they won the battle. Come on now. Do we need each other? I think we need each other. Amen? So I believe that God release, he, he reveals himself through praise, and I believe God releases his power as we pray. I'm going to have them put up right here, James chapter 5, in verse 16 through 18. Then I'm going to read you a portion of that in the Amplified. It says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. The one I want to show you is in the Amplified. It says, the heartfelt and persistent prayer of a believer can accomplish much 
when put into action and made effective by God, it is dynamic and can have tremendous power. Prayer. Yes, praise. Yes, yada. We need that prayer life. You see, I believe prayer, I believe prayer pulls on the anointing of God. Jesus and Matthew in the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew chapter 7, he, he tells us, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open unto you. As you look at those words, ask and seek and knock, those are words that aren't just one-time events. It says keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. Prayer is a, a spiritual travail, if you will. It's not just a petition unto God. It's a two-way communication. It's a connection. It's fellowship with our God. And so I've got a acrostics for that. You know, I had your acrostics for praise, Pat, right? Praise all the time. And you've heard this one. This is None of this is original. This one, the acrostics, is push. Pray until something happens. Keep on praying. Keep on asking. Keep on seeking. Keep on knocking. I believe the Lord releases his power as we pray. And, and to finish up this morning, guys, you can come on up, praise and worship team. I want to take you to a story. It's the, it, it, it happened during World War II. And um, that was during the bombing raids. And uh, I'm not sure if it was in the South Pacific or if it was over in the, uh, over in, uh, the European country. But there's a, uh, there's a poem that was writ written based on this account that as this bomber went and did what the bombers do and, and, and unloaded all of his bombs as he was coming back, his plane was shot to pieces. And he had only one engine left. He only had one wing left. The other wing was shot up and, and, and was not useful. And a poem was written. You can look it up. A poem was written about a wing and a prayer. And you think about the desperate situation that that bomber had. And, and, uh, and you think about desperate situations that are out there. And, you know, well, we just have a wing and a prayer. That's where that saying came from. Church, that's not us. We're not a crippled airplane. Church, we're not a crippled bird. Come on now. We need wings of praise and prayer. Yes, we've got spiritual weapons. We got the belt of truth. We got the word of God. We got the breastplate of righteousness. We're covered by, by Jesus Christ himself. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. He that knew no sin became sin, that we may become the righteousness of God in him. Put on Jesus. Put on him. Amen. That, that the world, uh, the Satan himself can't find you because you're, you're wrapped in him. Come on. The breastplate of righteousness. The shoes of peace. If you remember that, they had these spikes on them. And they were taking ground. Man, they were going forward. The shield of faith. Believe in God. Hallelujah. Trust God. Will quench the fiery darts of the devil. The helmet of salvation. Know who you are in Christ. The sword of the spirit. Can I say it was Moses' rod that was on that hill? Man, we got the sword of the Spirit praying always. Our tactics, you can stand to your feet. Our tactics, the two that I'm coming up with this morning, praise and prayer. The tactics, that definition is actions carefully planned to achieve a specific end. Praise and prayer, they go hand in hand. They go hand in hand, church. Let's praise Him. Let's lift up our hands and worship him. Let's throw up yada. Come on, a surrender and a praise unto God. And with God arise, his enemies will scatter. And I'm going to close with this right here. Prayer, prayer will keep us in this life. Praise keeps life in us. Prayer keeps us going. Praise carries us through. Prayer shows us the lily of the valley. Praise brings the bright and morning star. And the one that I love that I read this about prayer stops the storm. It stops the storm, but praise brings the rainbow. Father God, we come to you right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord God, that you're above all. And Lord God, you've equipped us. You tell us to uh, 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 put on the, arm, the full armor of God. You tell us to take it up. And that, Lord God, as we do, I thank you for the tactics that you've given us. You've given us the spiritual weapons and the tactics of praise and worship that we would be included, Lord God, in your SWAT team, that we would go 
uh, advancing your kingdom. Lord, praising you, worshiping you, because we know that, Father God, you dwell in the midst of your praise. And that, Lord God, when you arise, your enemies are scattered. Help us, Lord God, be all that you desire for your church to be. And we're sure to give you all the praise, the glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give him a hand clap of praise. I'm going to dismiss the congregation, but if you're in need of prayer, come on up. We'll be glad to pray for you. God bless you. Be praying for that steeple in the morning in Jesus' name.